Hello there, and welcome back to another video. We are still in Module 5, displaying two variable data, or bivariate data, and we have done several um, activities in this lesson, but we're up to the line graph. And this is one of the most common kinds of graphs that I've seen throughout my academic career and just in general. You see these in the newspaper and, and everywhere. So I wanted to make sure that, <clears throat> excuse me, that I include the line graph. This is the last one of the lessons in this module. So after this one, we will be looking at probability and then we'll be finished with our chapter and our course. So if you turn to this page, and I'm sorry I'm a little bit out of breath today, I'm having some issues with my asthma, so please bear with me, and I apologize if I sound a little bit funny, um, but I think we can get through this one. We are going to create a line graph, and I'm giving you some data. I should have given this data a title because it makes absolutely no sense other than we know that we have five weeks and some decimal numbers. So I apologize for not doing that. Let's give this one a title. This is gas prices for five weeks. So this will help make a little more sense out of this data. Week one, gas prices were $3.39 per gallon. And remember, I've told you throughout this course we need to do titles, and then I didn't do it, so I broke my own rule. Weeks two through five, the gas prices vary. So we are looking at one month, or a little over a month, of gas prices and how they have changed. So a line graph is especially useful when you have data that's continuously changing. Now that doesn't mean that you can't have equal data points in your data. It just means that it's showing us change over time. So a lot of line graphs will be based on time. Months, weeks, years, days, even minutes and seconds. But a lot of these graphs will involve time of some sort. And then our other factor here is the price that we want to show on a graph. So the first thing that we need to do is to decide on our axes labels. Remember the x-axis runs left to right and the y-axis runs uh, up and down, north to south. So for this particular graph that we're going to draw, I want to let the prices, the dollar amounts, be the y-axis and the x-axis will be the week numbers. So you need to think about that if you're going to draw a graph. You need to figure out where the data makes most sense on, on a graph, which axis is most appropriate for the data that you're using. And then step two, you need to determine a logical scale for each axis. Remember, the x-axis is going to be our weak numbers, and that's already scaled for me. It's 1 to 5. And then the y-axis, I want to show you a little trick here. The first thing I want to do is to figure out the range. Okay, and I'm not going to do that by subtracting. I want to just look at this one. And would you agree with me that all of these numbers are more than $3, but less than 4 so we have all prices are more than $3, but less than $4. And you'll see what I'm going to do with that in just a second. So I, I need to think about what I'm going to put on each axis. And then I need to figure out a logical scale for the data that I have. And this is determined completely by your data. The type of data and how it is, is written out. We have two decimal places in all of these numbers. 
everything is more than three, less than four. Those are the kinds of things to think about. So let's draw a graph. I'm going to come right here. <clears throat> I like to do my x-axis first. You don't have to, but I'm going to do that. And I'm going to just sketch a line for x. And go ahead and label that. If this is 1, there's 2, 3, 4, and 5. And I could have skipped three blanks in there if I had wanted to. That's fine, ever what you want to do, as long as they're an equal distance from each other. So these are the weak numbers, 1 through 5. And that is my x axis. I'm going to go ahead and shorten them just a little bit there. And then I need a y-axis. So let's draw a line that intersects right there. That was actually pretty straight for no straight edge. So this is your y, and this is going to be our prices. And remember we said that our smallest, everything is more than three. So I'm going to let this be three. I'm going to let this be three dollars and twenty cents. Three dollars forty cents. Three dollars sixty cents. Three dollars eighty cents. And then four dollars. Now, if we had a graph that was big enough, we could do this by the penny. We could do it by the dime, by the quarter. We could do it however you want to, by the nickel. But in this particular case, because everything is more than three but less than four, this scale is logical to me to just go every, really every line is 10 cents. So this is by the dime. If you look at this one that I didn't label, that would be $3.10. So we're marking every dime from $3 to $4. Okay, let's plot some points. So week one, gas was $3.39 per gallon. So that's going to be just under 340. And we're just going to have to, to estimate here. So week one, I'm going to go just under that $3.40 line. Week two was 352. So here would be $3.50. And we wanna go just a hair over that dot. So I'm going to plot it right about there. I know it's not exact because my graph is just not going to allow that. But it's close. It, it's it's good, a good estimate. Okay, week three is $3.84. So I'm going to go to $3.80 and almost halfway. Somewhere in there. It's close enough. Week four is 378. So I'm going to go just under the 380. It's not quite to 380. And then 369 is almost here at 370. So we're just going to go a hair, barely a hair under 370. So I have plotted my points, and I'm going to connect the dots. This will give us our trend line. So you see here what's happening. We have an increase, and then all of a sudden it starts coming down, a decrease. So this is not a positive or negative correlation. I would describe this as variant. It varies. It's variable. 
meaning that gas prices are up and down. They're not increasing consistently or decreasing consistently. They're moving around, um, and I don't know why. I don't know what the purpose is or what the reason is. I just know that they're changing. So step three was to plot the points and connect the dots, and you have drawn yourself a very nice line graph. I'm going to stop the video and then in the next exercise we will use this line graph to do some word problems. So I'll see you back soon.